welcome to Doggy Style TV. by the host, whoever hosts the event, right. in whatever town, we make a donation to that charity of choice. You also train dogs as well? Do you teach dogs to do no, this? No, most of these people who come out have been doing this for years. Wow, and where do they learn how to do it? Like, on the, at their cottage in the summer? Yeah, that's what? where it happens. Your dog just has to love the water and has to love, have a really good toy drive. So the people who come in, you said it was competition based, do they win something? Yeah, they, they win ribbons, they're all there. Right oh, there. so it's an actual, yeah, like, recognized sport. So what's the longest jump you've seen so far? Uh, well, the record is 31 feet. Uh, I haven't oh. seen the 31 foot record, but we've seen 25, 27 feet. That's amazing. Well, so you're going to do a show next? Right now. I've got to right. get going. Okay, Sorry to rush, awesome. but I've got to go. Nice meeting awesome. you. Good Take care of yourself. Luck, Thank you. Thank you. Let's watch the show. Stillwell from Positively. Victoria is a world-renowned dog trainer. Do you do other animals too? Just dog. Well, I do cats. Cats, but mostly oh, really? dogs. Yes. Are cats trainers? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I shouldn't say that. I have a cat that walks with us on our dog walks. Really? Yeah, two of them actually. It's quite wow. fascinating. Yeah, they're amazing. And I, even when we cross the street, he actually has learned now to cross with us so he, he does voice command really yeah well there you go yeah You've so your i know that was ridiculously dumb of me to ask that or to even be surprised so you have a show on animal planet mm -hmm. and how long have you been doing this why did you get into dog training uh, i've been a trainer for 15 years and uh, my show's been on animal planet for four years in the states but it's been going on eight years so it's about 60 countries around the world now and i'm a trainer i wanted to get advice um good advice about positive reinforcement methods, force-free methods, motivational training out to a general audience. 
Yeah, which is really great. And that's what our show is about too, promoting and, and introducing people such as yourself for, for the viewers who don't know, you know, what you do. And I've seen a few of your shows and I'm uh, highly impressed with, with your philosophies. So, but did you go somewhere to learn about this or was it just an innate thing? You were like a, you know... When, when I first started, there really wasn't a course in England that I could go to. So I basically, I learned with a mentor, and I interned with a mentor, and he was an amazing man who taught me a lot. And then um, through him, I met trainers and behaviorists, and I started working at rescue shelters, and I really built up a practical resume. Um, and then I became certified um, when I came over here in California, and from then it's just gone straight to strength. So you live in uh, Georgia, I think I live you in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Wow, why there? Are there a lot uh, of dogs my there? Oh, there your family's dogs, there? Um, <laughs> yeah, my husband's from there, and we live there, and, and it, it's a sort of nice kind of lifestyle down there. It's warm, I love the weather. Yeah. But also, it's a great way to be able to, it's a great sort of hub where I can travel. To That's right. And also, an easy way to get back to England as well. So, do you mostly film in the United States of America? Yeah, we do. Britain and um, Los Angeles, and New York, and Atlanta, Georgia. Now, has there ever been a dog that you can't fix? You know, I'd say in my 15 years, about three of them, and all of them have neurological issues, epilepsy, basically. And when a dog is epileptic, when they have severe medical issues, it's very, very difficult to treat that behavior. And they were all very aggressive dogs, so unfortunately. So, are you saying that most dogs that have epilepsy are aggressive? No. no. Okay. Not just at all. in just in case uh, they are, then is it a is it a learning impediment that they might have? Well, or? it's you know neurologically the dog is neurologically and chemically unable to learn, and um, with these dogs when they had severe they had a severe epilepsy they were unable to basically function, and so it just wasn't fair, and they were just expressing their aggression through frustration because they couldn't really control themselves. But most dogs that I have, I teach a lot of dogs that are epileptic and they're absolutely fine. And I also teach a lot of aggressive dogs as well. That's what I specialize in is aggression. So, um, you know, for 15 years, I only have three dogs that I haven't really been able to work with because of those me mega issues. I'm doing pretty well. Aggression is such a complex behavior issue. It really is. And um, I work very hard to try and help the dogs and help the owners too. Yeah, I mean, it, but is it true that when they say like like the dog, like the owner? In a way, sometimes yes. And I find that nervous dogs normally have nervous owners. Yeah, um, I find that too, nervousness. <laughs> so, right. It's true. So, and also, Owner compliance can be very hard. If you've got a dog that does have a major emotional problem like aggression, you have to be compliant, you have to do the work. Right. And if you don't do the work, you're not going to see a, a, a results. Yeah, for sure. And that's the frustrating thing for me. I always say training is 20% dog Oh, 100%, no doubt about it. Yeah. And I see that too. I mean, you know, we, a lot of times I have our clients that come by for dog shoes and the clothing and they're all very uptight about how aggressive their dog is going to be around my dogs and of course mine are always running off leash so. and I, I always I don't know I guess it's my calm but and my confidence that the dog's going to be okay and I've had several opportunities where my the dog would come in they would finally succumb and let the dog in after I convince them it's okay and they're fascinated by the result they're like wow I've never seen my dog so calm I've never I'm like because you're your uptightness is reflective and they're feeling that because they're so connected to us, you know, yes, they really are, absolutely. right? Absolutely, they feel yeah. our emotions, they see how we're getting stressed, they smell our stress, they, they absolutely pick up. You know, when you're stressed, you're, you're, you get facial tension, um, when you're nervous, your body goes tense, you breathe differently, of course they do. The fact that you're calm, the fact that you project a confident manner speaks volumes to your dog and that's basically what I'm teaching a lot of people be calm, to be confident, to, to take control in a positive way mm -hmm. and that projects confidence onto their dogs and confident dogs have no need to aggress, confident dogs have no need to be heart anxious right. um, and that's what I teach. Awesome. I actually just adopted, um, he went back to his owner but uh, I, I for a while I adopted and I neutered a, a Yorkshire Terrier that was just the poor thing, I mean you know he was never socialized, never left his apartment pretty much. They let him out in the backyard and then so when he came out into the real world, it was traumatic. Poor guy was scared of everything. I mean, I never thought I could 
I had, well, I did have confidence that I would be able to, to train him, to retrain him, right. or to train him because he never was trained. He peed everywhere, he barked at everyone, he was scared of his own shadow. I mean, but, and I saw with the, you know, six months that I had him and, and working with him and taking him to New York and all kinds of, and I trained him off leash as well, which I do. And most people don't appreciate, but it's okay. Um, I, 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 I do that actually because I believe that it brings dogs to a higher consciousness as well. And I, I, I did a lot of business in Mexico uh, growing up and I saw how the street dogs there, they would stop at the lights. Like right. they were so smart, they would just stop and wait till the you know pedestrians would cross and they would go with them. And it always taught me and showed me how intelligent a creature they are. They are, and I do, I, you know what, I, I agree with you. I mean, obviously you've got to follow leash laws, right. and, um, but sometimes leash laws can be to the detriment of the dogs. Really? So in parks and, pub and places where you know your dogs need to run around and they can't do that, that can cause so many issues. And my gosh, and leash aggression is one of them. Yeah, but exactly. um, I do believe that in some ways domesticating dogs have made them even smarter mm -hmm. How so? but because they've evolved to take cues from us to understand us right. to read our body language yes. to so in that way um, and also to survive it's pretty mm -hmm. smart for species to align itself to the one species that could potentially do damage to it or be its greatest advocate that's right dogs have been pretty smart to align themselves with man so there we go i yeah. think that's smart However, I do think that domestication, obviously, because they rely so much on us, they forget to survive themselves. They have that, See, that's, that instinct that's thing is too. kind of gone yeah. for that survival. And that's exactly what you're talking about. So in one way where I have to say, look, for people out there, yeah, you've got to be careful walking with your dogs on the street. Of and course. there's a lot of people that don't like dogs and don't like dogs coming up to them. But I also go with your point that Sometimes when, you know, survival. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, they learn. right? And how many times have we heard that as soon as a dog gets off the leash, it runs on the road because it doesn't, it doesn't know, know better. So, exactly. you know, all these people are so scared. And, and I see how the dogs never get exercised properly. And I mean, it's, it is terrible, right? It, that's it is, my pet it peeve. It really is. Terrible. It's like, let your dog off the leash. We're in the middle of the beach. There's nowhere to go. No, no, it's going to run away from me. I'm like, what does that say about you as an owner if your dog is going to run away from you? Where is he going? That's why and why? From a very, very young age, I teach dogs to have good recourse, to come back to their yes. owner. I teach owners fun. It's all about fun and play and have a game. And then your dog will want to come with you. Absolutely. Um, and it's just so important. Absolutely. You but know, so if we can get that message out there a little bit more, and it is difficult in in a country that you know finds you for having a dog off leash. I mean, you know, I can understand the fear also, and people don't have that extra money to spend two hundred dollars on on a ticket. Yes. You know, and, and nobody likes to get in trouble. I mean, most, and you know, then, but but geez, figure out a way to do this. You know, and I am always trying to promote that. So I yeah. think that's really great that you do too. Uh, it's yeah. one of the things I like about your your teachings and your what you're putting out there. It's so vitally important. Yeah, thank, yeah. You. thank, thank you. you. All right, high five. All right. <laughs> you have a book. I actually picked it up. Uh, Train your dog positively. Can we see that? When did you launch this? This was launched last week in the United wow, States. Wow, last week. So fresh off yeah. the press. Yes, it's fresh. Um, it's available only as a book down there, but I'm going to get it on Kindle. That's excellent, and, it's, and it talks about everything that you do. I mean, it's a whole complete guide it's to really Victoria. It's to understanding your dog, because I don't think, and there's a lot of people who get dogs who don't really understand them, so I really want people to really understand how the dog perceives mm -hmm. the world. It, it really goes into the dog's mind about their perception of the world, about how you can be a better teacher to them, about how you can understand them, about how they understand you, yeah. about different emotional problems and behavioral issues with solutions. Uh, and that's, that's, that's everything, really. I mean, because you're right, a lot of people get dogs because they're lonely because they want a child pseudo child they you know they want company I get it but so it's like having a child without reading how to you know raise a child yes. book so it's, it's amazing that you're offering a wealth of information for them to go by and I and I just commend you on all the great positive things that positively does and uh, thank you Victoria that's thank amazing I, I just all the best thank you for pleasure having meeting you. you thank you so much great to meet you too. amazing